Welcome everybody and welcome to the November Ad Espresso by Hootsuite webinar. So first of all, thank you everybody for taking time out of your busy day. I know that a lot of you are busy with your Black Friday and Cyber Monday campaign, so we really appreciate you taking the time. So today's session, we're going to be doing some uh, in-depth training on how to create high converting Facebook ads. And we're going to be doing two parts. First of all, Braden's going to be looking more at the images side. And then Anna's going to be looking more at the sort of uh, ad tech side of things. And um, so before we start getting into that, a common question we always get asked is, are we recording the session? Yes, we are. I know a lot of you will want to go back and, and get take in all that training. So um, you can go to adespresso.com forward slash webinars. We upload it there within 24 hours. It's normally more like a couple of hours after the live event. And also you can go onto our YouTube channel. If you just search for Adespresso on YouTube, you can find it there. Um, so I guess today they're going to give their own introductions, but first of all, we've got Braden. I'll just give a very, very quick intro there. Um, so he works on the social marketing team at Hootsuite and is one of the people responsible for creating the social media content for our social media channels. And we've actually got over 9 million followers on social media channels. So this is quite a, a big deal there. Um, so let me just share my, let me just share um, Braden's uh, presentation here. Let's go make presentation. There we go. Can you hear us, Braden? I can. Hello. Can everyone see Thank my you. screen? Great. Okay. Can every, you can hear me good? We can hear you good. Awesome. Great. Um, so hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining me in on this webinar today. Um, today I'll be going over how to create eye-catching content on social media from a paid and organic perspective. Uh, you can expect to leave this webinar learning more about the world of content creation on social and key takeaways to integrate into your social media strategy. So as Paul mentioned, my name is Braden Cohen and I'm joining in live from Vancouver, Canada. A bit about me, I'm the social marketing specialist at Hootsuite where I work on strategic projects and campaigns related to Hootsuite's global social marketing channels. And as, as Paul mentioned, we have over nine plus million followers. I work closely with my team and I oversee areas of content creation, channel strategy, publishing and community advocacy to create a best in class social strategy. So today I'll be walking you through a few different topics, including why visual content matters, how to create engaging content that resonates, content tools for marketers and best practices on Instagram stories. So let's dive right in. I want to start off today by setting the stage for creating high engaging content. As marketers, we all hopefully understand the importance that visual content has for our strategy. But not every organization has the resources to invest in content, which might hinder the success of your campaigns in the short and long term. So these statistics I'm about to walk you through will be your secret weapon when proving to your boss the importance that visual content has for your strategy. So whether you know this or not, humans officially have shorter attention spans than a goldfish. You may have heard this before, but the fact is it's still true. Humans are being fed so much content all the time and what they choose to consume is completely up to them. Recent studies have found that only 20% of people read content online, whereas 80% just skim the content. I think we all know that feeling when you scroll through Instagram and quickly stop on your feed because of ad creative that's caught your eye. So humans are 65% more likely to remember visual content. The brain works in mysterious ways and it's more likely that your current or future followers will remember something you put out in the world if it's visually engaging, whether that be an image, animation, video, or GIF. And with ad prices on social networks always increasing, it's important to fully utilize all the space that social networks offer when creating your ad set. This includes fully optimizing the ad space with an image or video and accompanying copy. So Facebook posts that include images earn 87% of all engagement. Seriously, this number is so telling. And did you know that Facebook has a text rule where only 20% of your ad creative can include text? If Facebook is putting these measures in place, it truly speaks volumes. Instead, I recommend using the title, meta text, and call to action as areas to grab your audience's attention with copy. Use the actual ad for extreme visuals. So now let's take some time to look over how to create content that resonates with your audience. 
Before creating any content for your social channels, it's important that you're following a social media style guide. A social style guide is where you go to know how your brand should look and behave on social. And many brands don't have this, and that's why you see disjointed messaging, tone, and brand colors across your channels. A social media style guide can include a variety of things, but most importantly, you need to know your audience. Too many businesses lose sight of their who. Instead, you should be creating a buyer persona, which is a fictionalized representation of your ideal customer. You can know things like their age, job title, interests, and professional challenges, and things like how they speak, consume content, and behave on social, so you create content that will resonate with them on a personal level. An example of a company creating a great social media style guide is Medium. They clearly outline how their logo should be placed on different backgrounds, the fonts that should be used on social, and color schemes to be used across different devices. Know your brand's voice. No matter who's posting on your social channels, they should understand the way you speak and interact with your followers. Outline the way you should talk to customers, words you never want to use, favorite emojis, and when to use acronyms for your brand. These are some great examples of ads and Facebook on Facebook and Instagram that do an awesome job with creative elements. The images are clean and crisp, and they have some secondary text to help tell the story, but the visual is the main focal point and speaks volumes. So you should definitely know what and when to post. Sometimes you run out of ideas and don't know what to publish on your networks. List where to find blog posts, announcements, image, videos, and GIFs to make your brand shine on, shine on social. So no one on your team is stuck when looking for new content. But it's also really important to utilize a publishing calendar with the most optimized times to post across each network so you're publishing at the time to get the most eyeballs on your post. Remember, this could be different across all networks, so it's important to look at this data regularly. There's no shameless plug here. Hootsuite has always been a leader with ad creative. In the ad on the left, they use short and impactful and punchy text to make a statement, whereas the ad on the right has a strong CTA button with text hierarchy with different typefaces that make it easy to follow. Next is to know your image and design guidelines. It's important to align your image and design guidelines with your overarching brand standards. For instance, you should know your brand's primary colors, image dimensions, where logos should be placed, and what fonts look best and when. It's also important to take into account the network you're looking to advertise on. For instance, ads in the Instagram feed versus Instagram stories should be designed differently as the sizing specs will show up differently on your customers' phones. For instance, the ad on the very left was designed for stories and ads for stories should be designed as a portrait and also keeping in mind not to put text close, too close to the edge to be cut off. So now let's get to know the creative basics. You do not need a $5,000 camera and expensive tools to create high converting visuals. Just follow these steps instead. Have a clear subject. Ensure you have a single focal point for your image. If not, your image will look too busy and may not line up with your feed. You should be using natural light because some of the most engaged photos are taken with natural light in an outdoor setting. If your image is too dark, it will be hard to see and less people will engage with it. Keep it simple. When it comes to visuals, less is more. You can tell the exact same message with a powerful image and less text. And definitely don't over edit. Resist that temptation to press all the buttons. Be subtle when it comes to filters and features. So be tasteful with text. The most important thing about text and images is making sure that it adds value. And make sure your text and visuals is bold, legible, straightforward, and concise. Make sure there's enough contrast between the text and the background so it's readable for your audience. So one really important thing you want to keep in mind is to always check spelling and grammar. You definitely don't want to be the brown that sends out a post with a spelling mistake because you know what will happen next, trolls. Always proofread your posts before sending them out or download an app like Grammarly to triple check. Choose your typeface wisely. Choosing a type that's on brown and easily legible is important. If you mix fonts, I recommend pairing a serif with a sans serif to spice things up. Keep your text short. 
It's best to keep your text on one line whenever possible. Watch out for orphan words that split up text on the two lines as well. Animate your text. So remember that you always have the option to animate your text and have fun with it. This is helpful when you have a lot you need to say or want to make an impact with something short and to the point. Apps like Canva and Mojo make animating, make animating text easy. And last but not least, size images to spec. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when sharing visuals is using the wrong image size. Images with the wrong aspect ratio or low resolutions can be stretched, cropped, and crunched out of proportion, which reflect poorly on your brand. And did you know every image or every channel, sorry, has different sizing specs? Hootsuite has a great plot blog post listing out all the size specs for each network and content type, which I personally bookmark for reference and use every day. Don't ignore aspect ratio. Some platforms auto crop image previews based on aspect ratio. So if yours is different, you could end up with an unfortunate crop or have important info left out. And image sizes will always vary by device. So ads look different across all devices and areas of the feed. For instance, on Facebook Ads Manager, you can see what your ad will look like in different feed types. A quick tip is to check what device most of your followers use to ensure your image is optimized for that device. And Instagram stories or Facebook stories, they'll always play a key role. If they're still new to you, a quick tip is to retain from putting images and text in the corners of your stories so they aren't cut off, as I mentioned before. So now, as a social marketer, I use a variety of free and paid tools to help with my day-to-day -day needs. But I narrowed it down to six of my favorite and the best tools that I use. So Canva is a great tool to use for every marketer. Most of their offerings are free, which is awesome if you have a tight budget. Canva offer also offers pre-built and customizable templates for all social networks, and you can edit images and animations. It's also super easy to upload images and design files. I typically use Canva to create pre-made templates for social as it's very easy to drag and drop assets, which I'll then share with my team for them to customize themselves. AdExpresso also offers an integration with Canva directly in their platform. So I recommend you check that out. Mojo is my favorite tool for creating videos for Instagram stories. They allow you to create animated videos that have a variety of customizable options when it comes to text, effects, and colors. You're able to save the template themes to use again in the future and add music, which makes your Instagram stories more engaging. I highly suggest downloading this app. Clipomatic is another one of my favorites, but more niche focused apps. It allows you to add video captions to any piece of social content and can detect spoken words, which saves me so much time when I'm on the ground at an event. At Hootsuite, we typically use this to add captions to our stories when we're more at events and don't have the time to type it in manually. Unfold is another app to have in your back pocket in conjunction with Canva. Unfold has a variety of minimalistic design collages and templates for Instagram stories, and you can easily mix text with video to create a seamless storyboard for Instagram. And where would we be without Unsplash? If you haven't heard of the website, now is your time. Unsplash is a free website with one plus million free stock photos. You can easily search by subject or theme and images are usually pretty up to date. The nice thing about Unsplash is that you can use these images with your social ads too, free of copyright, which is super helpful. And what's there not to love about Hootsuite Impact? Impact includes customized dashboard to track posts, performance, leads, sales, and even conversions. You can easily build out reports for a higher level audience like your executives or gather real-time data on a post-by-post -post basis. It has features for competitor benchmarking and visual audience insights to make data easy to understand and analyze. This is something that the Hootsuite team uses often on a day-to-day -day basis to also track um, the metrics on our social posts across all of our networks. So today I'll also be going over how uh, some best practices for winning ad creative on Instagram stories. Um, so let's get right into it. At Hootsuite, Instagram stories have played a key role in our strategy for 2019 and it will continue to be a huge focus onwards. This avenue has presented us with a huge opportunity for growing our Instagram following, increasing awareness, and testing your ad creative. To better understand what performs well, we'll break down the story creative from Hootsuite to understand, um, 
what's what's performed. So first and foremost is have a clear subject. Before creating any content, and especially with Instagram stories, it's important to have a clear subject for your image. In creative one and two, you can see that the main focal point of the creative are the illustrations of the humans. This is the first thing your eyes land on when looking at the stories to help draw in your audience. Next is to, to choose an on-brand typeface. When you wanna create a more polished story, like in this case, created through Canva and Mojo, it's best to choose a typeface that follows your brand guidelines. This helps your followers better familiarize themselves with key components of your brand, like colors and font types. Of course, you can always use Instagram's native font for stories, but be sure to stick to ones that are most aligned with your brand. At Hootsuite, we typically use classic and strong font types within um, Instagram natively. Have a call to action. In story number two, the CTA takes up the bottom half of the screen with the statement, discover how. This prompts users to take an action on your story and is best accompanied with a hyperlink to send users to your website to learn more, register, or make a purchase, etc. As you can see from the stats, interactions were extremely high on the story because of the hyperlink we included, which actually increased our engagement rate by over 300%. You also want to take into network into consideration. With channels like Instagram Stories, you want to ensure that your creative is utilizing the entire screen to fully optimize the experience for your followers. That being said, be careful of visuals or text that are too close to the corner of the screens, as this will cut off when users are watching your stories. And last but not least, make sure you're animating your stories. Adding animations to your stories helps them stand out when your followers are clicking through stories on Instagram. We use Mojo to animate the text in the third story to better captivate our audience. This is especially useful when you have a lot to communicate, um, when you have a lot to communicate, and Instagram's native network also has awesome GIF options to animate your story to. Um, so here are a few other examples of ad creative. Um, this is a current campaign we're running on Instagram stories around our 2020 trends webinar. And this is a campaign campaign that we tend to run every Q4 at the, towards the end of the year. So A-B test ad creative. Testing creative when it comes to Instagram stories is a great way to determine what ad resonates most with your audience. At Hootsuite, we typically run a split test between two to three pieces of content for approximately five days. In this case, we've tested different three different ads varying in color, copy, illustrations, and CTA placements. It's important for the creative to be differentiated between each ad too, as you wanna make sure that one, you really wanna understand which one's performing better than the other. After running the split test, we can then see what ad performs best and continue it for the remainder of the campaign. Use your logo when appropriate. So when running ads, you should think about logo placement because putting your logo on ads helps with brand recognition in a crowded ad market. It's possible that prospects on Instagram don't know the name of your brand, but know your logo. So putting those both together can help build awareness and garner more leads for you. Thirdly, you wanna be clear with actions. In all of these ad options, it's pretty obvious what we're expecting the user to do when seeing the ad. Worst case scenario, they can read the ad and continue to browse Instagram. Best case scenario, they understand the goal of the ad and swipe up to register and learn more about the Trends 2020 webinar. So I can't stress this enough, less is more. Don't confuse people because too much messaging causes fatigue and people just won't pay attention to your ad. Use your ad creative as an avenue to draw attention to what you want people to do. In this case, register. Use illustrations to do the magic and let the copy be strong and punchy to assist with the final action. So here are some Hootsuite resources, which I highly recommend. recommend. Um, Hootsuite offers some amazing resources. Uh, the links will also be added directly to the webinar chat for you to learn more about. Um, first and foremost, Hootsuite Academy is a great place to learn more about the world of social marketing taught by industry experts. And we have a variety of course offerings, so I recommend you check that out. Um, the Hootsuite blog is the place to stay up to date with key updates and trends and in the industry. Um, we publish new articles on the weekly, and they're always updated with what's happening in the industry. So I recommend you check that out and bookmark that our Hootsuite blog. We also put on regular webinars, webinars on a monthly basis with some pretty amazing speakers. 
So we have one coming up on December 11th talking about trends for 2020, which I recommend you register for too, because that will be um, highly informative. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about the Hootsuite program, check out our plans. And that's all for today. So thanks so much everyone for tuning in and I hope you've learned a thing or two. Uh, feel free to connect or reach out directly to me on LinkedIn. And I believe I'll be sending it over now to Paul and there'll be a Q&A at the end as well. Thanks so much all. Thank you, Braden. Lots of really actionable tips there. Um, so if anybody wants those resources, they are in chat there. I'm just gonna take back the, um, just share my screen here for a second. There we go. Okay, so we're going to be handing over to Anna now. Unfortunately, uh, Anna was taken unwell today, so couldn't join us live, but she's done a really, really good video there. I was just watching this, and it's full of really good tips uh, covering the ad tech. So let's go and start this video. And then keep your questions coming in. My colleague Toy is monitoring the chat at the moment, and we're going to get to as many questions as possible at the end. But now we're going to hear from Anna. So this is just going to take a second to load up the video. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this part of the webinar where we're going to be looking at how to use copy to create high converting ad campaigns. Quick introduction into who I am. Some of you may know me as one of Ad Espresso's senior blog writers as I've been writing for the company since February of 2015. During that time, I've been a full-time freelance writer specializing in PPC copy, ghostwriting, and content marketing. I've worked on hundreds of different campaigns with everything from small businesses and startups to large corporations, so I understand the importance that good copy can make when it comes to driving the bottom line and getting new conversions. So first, let's take a look at what is great copy, uh, because of course, how can we write it if we don't know what we're trying to do? Uh, first, it must explain to users why they should click, and it needs to persuade them to take action. It needs to be tailored to your specific audience, which we're going to look a little bit more at in just a minute. It always needs to match your brand voice, because if it doesn't sound like you, there's going to be a disconnect. Um, and it needs to be informative without having so much information that it becomes overwhelming. So let's take a look at an example of why copy is so crucial. Uh, this is an image from a Facebook ad. It's interesting, but not particularly informative on its own. You might pause to look at it and wonder what it is, but then you move on. So now let's take a look at it with the full ad in place. Once you see the full picture with the copy included, it's another story. The copy explains what we're looking at and why it matters. These silicone bags are useful, reusable, non-toxic, and they're even helping to fund planet-saving nonprofits. This is a very persuasive ad and it demonstrates value and it ends with an offer with free shipping on orders over 40. This is an ad that can help you get conversions, even if it's a product that users never really thought about needing. So today, what we're gonna look at, we could easily spend 20 hours sitting here talking about how to write you know, great copy for Facebook ad campaigns alone, but we're gonna break it down into a couple key areas that's gonna really help you improve your campaigns, develop ad copywriting strategies that will allow you to write the strong copy that will drive conversions. So first, we're gonna look at establishing customer profiles and tying them to relevant pain points. Then we're gonna take a look at features and benefits, make sure that we're all on the same page with understanding how to use them. Uh, then we're going to move on to writing copy for different stages of the ad funnel. So first, let's take a look at establishing customer profiles and relevant pain points. It's essential to understand your different audience niches before you even start coming up with copy strategies. Different audience niches are going to respond to different types of copy, so it's essential to understand each one before you start. So here, we're going to pretend I'm starting a kickboxing studio and I need to understand who my different customer profiles are and what they need. So let's take a look at this example. So first, we're going to have parents of children who are looking to get their kids into something active but structure that's going to last year round outside of school. They might be on a tighter budget, but they're going to be in it for the long haul. Second, we're going to have people who have never worked out in their life but who want to get in shape and kickboxing seems fun. It's on trend, it's interesting, they want to give it a shot. 
My hypothetical studio is open to people of all experience levels, so this is an audience segment that I'm going to want to target. Third, we're going to have people who are active and frequent gym goers, but who are looking for a community and a group activity. They want to meet new people, but they're also looking for a fun thing to do. They're typically going to be young adults between the ages of 20, 35, and are less likely to have children. Finally, we're going to have semi-experienced kickboxers who take the sport really seriously, and they may even want to train for competitions. They're they're going to sign up for as many classes as you let them take in your program, and they're typically going to be interested in paid private lessons as well. So these are going to be very high-value, very engaged members of the studio. So this is how you can break it down. And once you've got your list of customer profiles, you really want to think about the pain points for each one. This is crucial because you absolutely need to speak to each individual customer's needs and pain points when writing copy for it to be effective. And this will be unique for each individual profile. So the parents, for example, are going to want to keep their kids active while giving them something to do outside of school, maybe offers a little bit of discipline. This can be hard to find year-round, remember, since the sports only are going to last a brief season, and most school-sanctioned activities don't extend through the summer. So people who have never worked out before, they're going to be intimidated. They need to be reminded that your studio is friendly and that the hardest part is just making the decision to walk through the door. They want to know that you're accepting, that you're going to be willing to take them from beginning to a pro level, just like where they want to be. So you want to map out these customer profiles, making them as in-depth as possible, and get specific about these pain points. You really want to understand what motivates them and what drives them. While it can feel cumbersome to create ads for each individual audience, that really is going to be the best way to create high converting ads moving forward. Okay, so now that we've looked at how to establish customer profiles, let's take a quick look at features and benefits. So using features and benefits is a classic sales technique that is incredibly persuasive when it comes to driving conversions. Features are essentially different aspects of your product or service that make it both unique and advantageous to your target audience. Benefits are going to be the explanation of how those features are advantageous and how they benefit the audience member. So the features are really defining the what and the benefits are defining kind of the how and the why. Uh, As a note, I really want to stress that features and benefits are most effective when used together. A lot of mistake that I've seen in ad campaigns is that they're using one or the other, when in reality that can um, impact the campaign negatively. When you use them together, the feature is going to feel more impactful and more powerful, and the benefit is going to seem believable because they understand how you're getting the benefit and how it's impacting them. So let's look at an example really quick. This ad from Molecule, if you skip right down to the uh, the second paragraph here, the first sentence, underlined in red, is the feature. Molecule destroys airborne allergens, mold, dust, bacteria, viruses, and gaseous chemicals. That is a feature. They're saying something that the product does. And then the benefit to the user is that it makes the air you breathe healthy again. That is how it benefits you. Using them together is very powerful and it makes more sense and it kind of brings everything full circle. Okay, so now we're breezing right along. Let's go ahead and move into writing copy for all stages of the Facebook ad funnel. For those of you who are unfamiliar with ad funnels, they're essentially a series of ad campaigns that are designed to nurture relationships with users, moving them through the sales funnel. They're typically going to use multiple layers of retargeting to do this. In most cases, I want to acknowledge that you're going to need ad funnels to drive significant conversions. I can't tell you how many campaigns I've worked on where people express, you know, my clients are like, how soon can we get conversions? But they only want to purchase one ad campaign from me. That's not realistic. You need the retargeting in place to capture people who maybe like the ad the first time, but they're just not ready yet. It's going to be crucial to write messaging that's relevant to users who are at all stages of the sales funnel. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. We're going to look at two different ads from a company called Almond Cow. This is the first one here that each targets users at different stages of the sales funnel. So here, the ad copy says, what if you can make any type of plant-based milk you can imagine with the touch of a button without straining through a nut milk bag? Well, now you can, the Almond Cow. This is clearly designed 
to introduce the product, explain what you can get out of it, and establish brand awareness. This is what you want to show an audience who has never heard of you or has just barely heard of you and needs a reminder as to what you can do and some of the advantages that you can offer, which again is going to be plant-based milk, touch of the button, whatever type you want, no straining through a nut milk bag. Or has just barely heard of you and needs a reminder as to what you can do and some of the advantages that you can offer, which again is going to be plant-based milk, touch of the button, whatever type you want, no straining through a nut milk. No straining through a nut milk bag. So now let's take a look at the second one here. What if we've told you we could give you a recipe book with all of our favorite almond cow recipes? What if we also told you it was completely 100% free? Head to our website, link in bio, scroll down to the bottom and click send me the ebook. Enjoy. This ad campaign is not useful to users who have never seen the original campaigns and don't know who almond cow is. They don't know exactly what it makes. They don't know what the value is. They hear recipe book which is cool, but they don't know Almond Cow. So this ad wouldn't be valuable to them. It's a fantastic lead generation ad campaign, which is clearly the goal here to drive people to the lead magnet and then get them to download it. But you need to follow it up after an initial brand awareness campaign or to a warmer audience who's already familiar for it with you. That is what writing for copy at all stages of the sales funnel is going to look like. So here's an example of a really basic funnel, and you got to forgive me for not being able to find a perfect example of the dynamic ad. Did the best I could. It's surprisingly hard to find them being run all at once. So you're going to start with a simple brand awareness campaign, like the one all the way on the left. The idea is to make the product seem appealing while introducing it to your audience. So here there was a video that talked about how the pants are extremely comfortable and lightweight, Perfect for any activity that you have on the books. The last pair of pants that you'll ever put on or the last pair of joggers that you'll ever need are phrases that this company commonly uses for taglines, headlines, um, used in the main portion of the copy to attract the target audience. So then let's look at the middle example. Uh, they're using an ad featuring UGC in the form of testimonials and a five-star review that's paired with a strong video to retarget users who watched their previous video but who are now in the consideration stage. Testimonials can be very powerful motivators for customers who are interested, but they're not ready to purchase yet, and they're really on the fence. So last but not least, let's take a look at the ad over here all the way on the right that's showing the product to the customer with a 10% off coupon. So this is showing a different product, but it's a dynamic ad. So they're also going to be showing joggers to those who have viewed the joggers on their site. The discount codes are going to help nudge users to convert if they were on the fence already, because who doesn't love a great deal? So this is what it's going to look like when you're writing copy for all stages of the Facebook funnel. Now that we've covered the basics, of copywriting. Let's take a look at copywriting best practices that are directly linked to an increase in conversions. The first one that I want to point out is that you should never ever forget mobile. This is so important because more than 90% of Facebook's ad revenue is currently coming from mobile and Facebook usage is heavily skewed towards the mobile app. So it's essential to double check your copy while you're putting it it's essential to double check your copy and not just the images while you're plugging it in during the ad creation process. So first, you're only going to get three lines of visible text before users are hit with that continue reading. I specifically chose this image because here you can see that they have an extra space right here to try to separate and draw attention to different lines of copy. What they've ended up doing accidentally is cutting off an entire line that they could have used to draw in potential users. What you want to do to overcome this challenge is to front load your information. You want to start with a strong hook and you want to put the most information that is directly relevant to your audience up front. This will include trying to appeal to those pain points and your customer's specific needs right at the beginning so that you can draw them in so that they'll be interested enough to hit that continue reading button. So here they just used trendy yet timeless rent and return wedding florals. That's pretty simple. Um, trendy yet timeless is something that 
having worked with a wedding planner, it's something that I understand a lot of brides are worried about. They want something to feel modern, but still timeless enough that they're not going to cringe when they look at their wedding pictures in 10 years. And then they also make sure to stress rent and return so that people are knowing that it's nothing outside their budget. So this is a good example of how to front load your ad copy, but again, you know, test it and see how it works. I typically wouldn't recommend wasting one of your three valuable lines um, on blank space. So next, uh, you're going to want to use short and sweet but still very meaningful headlines. Um, you want to highlight your main selling point or the main pain point that you can resolve in your headline, which is going to be showing up right here on the ad campaigns. Okay, you want to keep it short and sweet and to the point. You don't have that many characters. So you want to take advantage of every single one. You know, think of it kind of as clickbait. How are you going to get people to click on this ad and pay attention to it? Um, a last thing you really want to do, consider offering value wherever possible. Prove how this product or this click or this link is going to be valuable to your target audience. So this is a great example from crowdfunding projects. You know, they stress that you can sear, bake, or fry with unbeatable results. They're really stressing the versatility of their product, which grabs immediate attention for people who are sick of overly crowded kitchens, and they elaborate more on what it can do in the ad copy. I want you to use stories. This is something that people think they need to write a novel. They really don't. Um, your stories can be as simple as worried about family showing up to a messy house at Christmas, will help you get everything in order. That's a quick, simple story that is going to connect on some level. Stories are emotionally powerful and memorable. They're going to help set you apart from your competition. And that's what you want. You want to really resonate and make that connection with your target audience. Um, you can create stories that are relevant with each audience niche in mind and their specific pain points. That is how you're going to have the best results here. Um, as a note, you know, you can have longer ad copy that tells stories. Uh, this is a great example from Vesna Hursto. She has very, very, very long copy. In some instances, this is actually not even the full copy. We had to cut it off to fit it on the screen. And she tells great stories. I want to acknowledge that that's not right for everybody. Um, in many cases, copywriters are going to be the ones who are able to do this best. I recommend testing different lengths of stories, seeing what works best for you. Um, and that's really going to be the key to finding out what connects with your audience. Which, of course, brings us to our very last tip here. You, you want to split test, split test, split test, split test. You want to split test. You want to split test like nobody's business. Uh, you never know for sure what's going to work with copywriting until you try. Even people with years of experience in the business and years of good experience, you have to test. Um, there are changes in audiences, changes in the marketplace, changes in consumer behavior, um, ad platforms, ad formats that are going to require that we're regularly testing to see what's working and what isn't and to start to figure out why. I really recommend testing different emotional appeals, solutions that you're offering, links and styles of copy, messaging, and more. Um, I really like to create multiple ad copies for each campaign. I call it creating a set of ad copy that appeals to a single pain point and a single audience, but they'll either leverage different features and benefits or styles of copy or even links to the copy to see what works best. It's a good way to test out different strategies and find what's really going to help you connect with each individual audience niche. Um, for this, I really do recommend Ad Espresso split testing feature. It's a shameless plug, but it is a good one, and I've used it for a very long period of time now. Uh, you can speed up the process. Like you can see here that we have two different headlines that we're testing for a single strategy, a single ad campaign, and multiple ad tags. This is going to allow you to mix and match different copy and see what works and what combination, and it's going to help you, you strengthen your campaigns moving forward. So that's pretty much it for today. I know it's a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, if you ever decide that you do want to hire me, I sell both copywriting and content marketing packages through my business. 
ad sets with up to three headlines and four ad texts start at $400 and that comes with strategy development included. Discounts are available when you are purchasing multiple ad sets at once and customized packages are available for each client. If you decide you'd like to hire me for a copywriting or content marketing package, you can get in touch with me at my website, which is www.annacotter.com. All right, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention today. I will be turning it back over to Paul. Have a good one, and I hope everyone enjoys their holiday season. Thank you very much to Anna there for her tips on copywriting. Uh, just going to go and share my screen again. It's going to be one second. There we go. So thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we're going to be going on to Q&A in a second. Uh, just before we do, just like to thank everybody for watching our presentations. We'd like to give you a little special offer there, um, exclusive for webinar viewers. So we'd like to offer you a free 14-day trial with 30% off at Espresso. You can just go to adespresso.com uh, forward slash webinar there. Um, also, if you'd like some specific help with your campaigns, like you might watch that and think, okay, I need some help with this, um, we can help you there. So we've got three uh, ways of doing that. First is a 10-minute tactical review where we can review one of your campaigns, tell you what's good, what's bad, what needs improvement. Um, and that's like a 10 minute screencast we do for you. There's more information about this on our website at espresso.com forward slash tour, and you'll see about marketing services. Um, if you wanna take it to the next level, we also do one hour strategy sessions there. This is like an interactive video call, one-to-one -one where we can look at your high level strategy and really help you succeed with your ads. That's for both Facebook and Google ads. And also, if you really just want that hands-off approach and you want that really specialist in-depth help, we do have a concierge service, which is very much like an agency where we can actually run your ads for you. Um, just to let you know as well, a little heads up about our next webinar, gonna be coming up in December. That's gonna be on Thursday 19th. Um, that's gonna be by myself, and we're gonna be covering how to master Facebook Pixel. Facebook Pixel, very technical subject, but really important to succeed with your Facebook ads. We ran this last year in November, but so much has changed on the way that you can set up and um, analyze your Pixel. So we decided it, to run it again, to again set you up for 2020 there. So we're gonna open it up to questions now. So if you wanna type in that chat box, any questions, and we'll get to as many as we can before this webinar ends. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Tori and Braden's also going to rejoin us so we can uh, take some of your questions now. Awesome, Paul, can you hear me? We can, yeah. Perfect, awesome. So first couple of comments here, one from Roger saying great concise uh, content webinar. Thank you so much. So thank you, Braden and uh, Anna as well. Uh, our first question here is from Jim. Jim says, uh, how do you create effective copy for people between ages of 55 to 65 that are looking for retirement services? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say you want to be to the point and concise, as I think both Anna and I mentioned within our um, within our presentation today. I think you one thing you could really do is people in like the baby boomer phase of their life, they're really looking at the visuals when scrolling through their feeds. I'm thinking about my parents and I'm thinking about the way that they use um, social networks. I think what catches them first is the visual and then the copy to explain what's what's happening. So I would just like straight to the point, explain what adds value and um, and um, have a have a strong call to action, you know, like ha once you send them to maybe a landing page, make sure that landing page like really connects to that ad and really helps tell that story further. Your follow up I, question from uh, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I was just going to jump in and and give a quick opinion as well that um just be really careful to to think about the images that you use. Like Braden was saying that you get people for retirement use these really cheesy stock images and that people that are 55, they're not gonna to resonate to these images that look like people are, are kind of in, in God's waiting room. So just be careful with the images. Um, also, if you do you appeal to the kind of over 65 market, then think about your call to actions that people sometimes are more likely to complete the action, you know, by phone rather than 
trying to do everything 100% online there. So just think about different ways that people can contact with you. Also find that a lot of the searches are on uh, tablets, like uh, iPads, Amazon sort of like Fire tablets as well. So just make sure that when you, you're testing and optimizing your ads and websites, go and check on tablets as well as mobile and desktop. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think another thing with stock photos is, I mean, I did recommend Unsplash and Unsplash is great, but a lot of websites do have very cheesy stock photos when it comes to things like maybe seniors or people that are a bit older. Um, so always it's good to maybe invest in like a small lower budget photo shoot or something to create more engaging images that you can use and have as your own to run ads or like organically. So that's another thing to have in your back pocket. Awesome. Um, next question here is from Chandler. Uh, are there going to be any handouts? So we're going to be uploading the video on YouTube and sending it out via email, but no handouts. Uh, we will also be including some of the resources that Braden mentioned, uh, the Hootsuite blog, webinars, and plans and things like that. So we'll send a couple of links there. In yeah. fact, I'll just, uh, just jump in. We also, um, Anna's presentation is also in blog format. We've just put that onto the Ad Espresso website. So if you go onto adespresso.com, forward slash blog, then uh, Anna's blog is on there as of this morning. Awesome. All right, so next question here looks like for Braden. Um, can we use still images for products like socks or is video almost always a must? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say it's always best to mix it up. Having static images is still great. I mean, I know people say video is king now when it comes to social networks, but it's still, you can still retarget people with static images and easily show the product that way too. And it's a bit quicker um, in terms of a con content creation standpoint. I would just be sure to mix it up and not just have imagery, um, but both, both are good. Awesome. Um, next question here from Steven, is it worth hiring Ad Espresso or a copywriter to teach me how to write uh, Facebook ads? Yeah, I love that question. <laughs> um, I would say uh, copy is a really strategic, um, copywriting is a super strategic role and you want to do it well because it could um, really help with leads and conversions and everything of the sorts. So I would say if it's not your strong suit, it's always great to kind of um, be mentored by someone that knows how to do it well. So yeah, if you have the time and the resources to do it, I would definitely look for external, uh, um, someone externally to give you a hand and show you the ropes. Yeah, I'll just jump in there as well. A um, really good copywriter to follow is Laura Bell Gray. Um, you can just go onto her website. She's got some free lead magnets. Um, and then really just kind of make a list of the brands that you like, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, and kind of see what they're putting there. And then generate your own brand voice from there. Like some brands are really jokey and informal. Some brands are more serious. Um, there's not always one right or wrong. You just need that kind of consistency with brand there. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, a really good way of writing uh, uh, copywriting is to be on Twitter, um, especially in the old days when you only had like 160 characters. But it made you get really, really concise in just everyday tweeting on there. Um, so it's still a really good medium to do that. If you if you can succeed with uh, tweets, then copywriting is much easier. Um, also, so so to sort of give loads of tips, but it. One thing that I recommend as well is that if you're new to copywriting and you're writing your own ads, um, keep it short, keep it sweet. You know, focus on two or three sentences going through maybe like one feature and one benefit. But you do see people uh, do super long ad copy and that can work really well, but um, you need to be a really good copywriter to like long form. Um, it's much easier stuff with short form, stick to the features and benefits because um, that's where you get like a car crash with copywriting. So if you try and go paragraph, 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 long form copywriting and you're not expert at that. Yeah, I think Paul brings up a great point. Sometimes when I'm writing copy for uh, social networks like Twitter, I'll start off with something that's quite long and then knowing that that's too many characters for Twitter, then over time I'll just kind of narrow it down and it will be like straight to the point and also maybe a bit of humor in there. So I kind of like, work on funneling down the coffee over time and that's always um, a great exercise. Awesome. Uh, next question here. Any insight on writing ad copy for Gen Z specifically related to higher education marketing? 
Um, that's that's a great question, and <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, I think uh, Gen Z is yeah huge opportunity now, especially when it comes to higher ed. Um, what I've noticed from the copy that I write from Hootsuite and what resonates with them is being real so talk like you're talking to them on a personal level not like you're talking to a huge group of people um it's more of a one-to-one -one dialogue instead of one to many um i also think that they don't want to have their time wasted and they're really looking for value in the things that they're focusing on and the brands that they follow so i think that's really important as well um yeah i'm not sure if you have anything else to add to that paul um, that's some really good tips there. I, I think you could probably go slightly longer, longer form on the ad copy, like def definitely try and put that value in just like you would do really with any audience on there. But sometimes we get into um, the, this sort of trap with ad copy where we go shorter and shorter. And I know I just said like, keep, keep it short if, it, if you're not sure at first, but you know, I'm thinking they're like, you know, three sentences, at least one paragraph. But what we see sometimes with ad copy is that it's getting shorter and shorter and people are putting like six words. Um, because that, that that might suit sometimes on things like Instagram stories, um, especially lower down the funnel. But if you're reaching out to Gen Z um, on first touch, they're gonna spend just that extra couple of seconds uh, reading the proposition. So yeah, go, go and put some valuable facts in there, make it just a couple of extra sentences, a couple of extra features and benefits, and I think that could work well. Also test different platforms for different people. Um, sometimes there's an assumption um, that the slightly older age groups are just on Facebook, they're not on Instagram, but we actually find some strong audiences there on Instagram. Um, not all the time, but that's why I would test. It's quite easy within Ad Espresso to do like a, a split test between Facebook and Instagram there. Great, uh, next question here is a highly debated one. Uh, any specific guidelines for using emojis and ad text? Oh, I'll jump in there. We, we did a study that um, like an experiment at, at Espresso once, and I don't think we found too much difference there. So the, I think it really depends on how you use them and on the customer base. And um, what, what I found is that using them like lightly can work very well for for example some of my clients we're putting out um uh, christmas campaigns at the moment so i just gone to emojipedia and um, really great and they have these lists for different holidays so you can find all the full themed emojis and they got all the christmas ones and just like putting like a little snowflake or like a santa or a snowman can work quite well um, but I think if you put like too many in a row, it's um, it's it's not going to work so well, especially when we've only got those, like Anna was saying, you've got three lines of ad text on mobile before people have to click the see more button to see extra there. So don't waste those first three lines with loads and loads of emojis. So yeah, that's, that's what I use. Also like when I've been selling um, fair trade products, that sometimes they're from different parts of the world and we might put the country flag and that looks really appropriate. We're not just putting, you know, half a dozen like garbage emojis for the sake of it. So lightly use them appropriately would be my kind of tips, but I don't know what you think there, Braden. Yeah, no, I think you bring up some valuable points. Um, I have a personal rule of thumb. I don't think you should be using more than two emojis per kind of copy post or any in any ad. I think it's kind of a bit of overkill. I have read quite a bit online. There's been quite a few tests that show, okay, if you use this many emojis per post, this is what the engagement rate tends to look like. Um, at Hootsuite, we tend to use emojis as much as possible because we notice we get most interactions that way and people resonate more with the post and makes them a bit more lighthearted and things like that. But it completely depends on your brand and your brand's guidelines. Um, one quick tip that saves me a bunch of time is if you're on an, um, an Apple product and you're on a laptop or um, a desktop, if you press control command space, that will automatically pop up all the emojis that are offered on your iPhone. So that's really easy if you're writing copy as well from, from a desktop or laptop. Should also be worth pointing out that um, the way that emoji is formatted depends on the device. So Apple, Google, Facebook all <laughs> render them differently. So make sure that you, you go and actually um, check what it looks like on Facebook because they can look radically different sometimes to on your iPhone there. Um, I know on Motipedia, they kind of list it out by device and they look quite different there. Right, yeah, you definitely don't want to have that like black box show up on an ad, that wouldn't be good. Right, uh, next question, oh sorry, go ahead. So I, say, I think we've got time for just like a couple more questions now. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, this was an easy one from Jacob here. Just getting started with Facebook ads. What's the best resource for setting up business manager, et cetera? Uh, actually, Jacob, we had a webinar on that in January. So if you go to adespresso.com backslash webinars, you'll be able to go ahead and find uh, how to get started with business manager. So that would be the best place as well. Um, all right, another one here from Eric. Uh, Eric says Facebook has some features that seem to mimic some of Adespresso's features. Uh, how does Adespresso stand out uh, from Facebook? Um, we actually have a webinar that runs three times a week in America time zone and two over in Europe uh, that goes over just that, some of the really unique tools and features of Adespresso that sets us apart from Facebook and Google. So I'll go ahead and send you an email with the link to go ahead and join one of those sessions, Eric, and you'll be able to uh, figure that out as well. Okay, awesome. I think we've got time for one more question. Okay, one more. Uh, one more question. Will there be a replay? <laughs> yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, send the replay out after this uh, via email. We'll also be posting that on YouTube as well. Great. Anything else? Right. If anybody's got any questions afterwards, um, say so just drop me an email, paul at espresso.com, and we'd be happy to follow up with you. And I told you the same, we've got loads of resources on adespresso.com and also on Hootsuite that we put those resources from Braden in chat, but we'll also put them on our replay notes as well so you can access them all. So thank you everybody for joining us. And remember to um, sign up on adespresso.com if you'd like to join in our uh, Facebook Pixel webinar next week. So I'd like to wish everybody a good Thanksgiving and good luck with your uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday campaigns. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Paul and Tori. It's been great. Thank you.